Hi, YouTubers and much favorites everywhere. It's MargaretGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Hang on, I got something very familiar and something that came in handy in a real pinch. You'll soon find out. Hang on. Yeah, that is really, really good. This morning we've got... The Trader Joe's Instant Coffee Packets. Boy, these are dressed up with creamer and sugar. Uh, absolutely marvelous. They, they look like this. You'll know why I'm holding my microphone in just a minute. <laughs> they look like this. You can travel with these, keep them in your pantry. They're, they're ready to go. All you need is some hot water and you've got a great cup of coffee, a really, really terrific instant cup of coffee. And the reason why we're using them is because I promised that I was gonna get some. Well, the other day, <laughs> I did go to get some, and as I came out of Trader Joe's, the tornado sirens went off, and we got hit with a huge storm here in Northeast Ohio. 350,000 people are without power, which is why I'm sitting here. Uh, I've got uh, this set up on the piano here, and um, because I got skylights right here to bring in some extra light, I got a window over here. I got uh, the door over there that is open to kind of bring in a breeze. I've got the other door, uh, the door that goes to the back deck open up over there. Let's try to get some light in here so I can light the situation without having any light behind me, uh, you know, kind of drown out uh, what you're looking at. So yeah, I've got some light coming in from here and from some of my other areas, so I think I'm well lit. Uh, for this morning for this morning's monday morning mailbag but it was a terrible storm i got caught in it just as i was getting into my car i called my brother tom up who lived in that general area south of where i was i said you know what? <laughs> what's going on he said mark bad weather coming in get over to the house here and you can kind of hunker down i said you know what i think i'll be okay i'll just i'll go down the road over here i'll make i get over to sam's club i'll get some gas because my car needed gas and he said, Mark, I'm telling you, you know, he was looking at the radar, I guess. And I said, no, I'll be okay. I got caught in it. I mean, I got, I had to pull off the side of the road. The street was a river. It was terrible. So I don't have any power. My power is completely out. And they say it may be a, uh, it may be a multi, a multi-day power outage. So we're going to have a little shorter Monday morning mailbag here because I'm going to be doing this in pieces. I'm working off of battery power right now. And I've got... Uh, about 38 minutes left. <laughs> the battery is not as hardy as it used to be. So I'm going to do the uh, Monday morning mailbag and get through some of these segments here. I might have to uh, cut some things and use them for the following week when power is restored. Uh, if power does get restored, well, then, you know, I might be able to, you know, add some things and get things uploaded. We have power at the office, so I have been charging things up there, and maybe I'll do some editing and uploading from there. Um, I don't know, playing it by ear. I think my, my brother has power, so I might be able to shoot some additional segments there, maybe do some editing there. You know what? I'm kind of playing it by ear, but I'm glad you're here, and I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me, and I'm just waiting for the power to get back on. So this is kind of the way we're doing the show today, and hopefully I'll get through some of these segments. Uh, today with uh, with this uh, nice lighting that we have, and I'll do again. I'll do the same uh, tomorrow and the next day uh, if I don't have any power, and that's how we're going to do it. So I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Let's get the show kicked off like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip. All right, this morning's shaving tip comes from viewer Lee Meyer, and he writes, Hi, Mark. I'm a big fan of the Monday Morning Mailbag and your reviews. I'm fairly new to wet shaving and only started using DE razors three or four months ago. One thing I noticed is that I tend to only apply balm immediately after I shave. I discovered that if I've had a particularly aggressive shave, which caused some irritation, it can also be helpful to apply some additional balm just before going to sleep, which can cool any burning and give your skin a chance to heal overnight. For me, the upper lip can often be a trouble spot and where I apply it most often. I like to use unscented balms at night so the fragrance won't get on my sheets. I'm particularly fond of sterling balms, which include witch hazel, aloe, shea butter, and vitamin E. 
I'm a daily shaver, and I find that when I use balm at night, I wake refreshed and ready to go. Thanks for your wonderful videos and recommendations. Regards, Lee Meyer. Lee, thanks for a really, really terrific shaving tip. There you go, folks. If you shave at night and you are um, you want to get rid of some of that excess irritation and maybe calm your skin overnight, apply some of that balm uh, before you turn in. And uh, Lee recommends unscented so it doesn't get on the sheets. Thanks very much, Lee. And to say thank you for you and only you, an original signed George sketch. So please send me your email address. No, email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. And if you out there would like an original signed George sketch, just send me a shaving tip. Send that shaving tip to mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it here on the viewer morning shaving tip of the Monday morning mailbag, you too will receive an original signed George sketch. So Lee, thanks again for a really, really terrific shaving tip. Really do appreciate it. Hey, we've got an extra shave tip this morning from viewer Jim from Northfield. And Jim writes, hey, Mark, this is my shave tip. When your single edge razor blade becomes dull, don't dispose of it. It's perfect for your box cutters. Since you don't dull out the corners of the blade, it's perfect for continued use in your box cutter. It's just a little way of recycling short term. You can always truly recycle it when the corners become dull in the cutter. Try that with your cartridge razor. Ha <laughs> is what he says here. Have a great week, Jim from Northfield. Hey, Jim, thanks for a really, really practical shaving tip. If you're using a, you know, a gem razor blade, a Micromatic, and you use those kinds of single edge razor blades, uh, hey, uh, when you're done shaving with them, use them in your box cutter. I uh, get a little extended life from them. Hey, Jim, thanks again for a really, really practical extra shaving tip this morning. Really do appreciate it. Well, here's your reminder that the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup is Saturday, September 14th, 2024 at River's Edge Cutlery in Hilliard, Ohio. Tickets are $5. They're limiting the attendees to only 50, 5 0, 50. So get up there and get a ticket. It's only five bucks. They're going to have food trucks there. A lot of great giveaways, uh, piff tables, the whole bit. We will link to their Facebook page and also to the page where you can get a ticket. So I hope to see you there. I got my ticket already. Remember, the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup, Saturday, September 14th, 2024, from 11.30 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. at River's Edge Cutlery in Hilliard, Ohio. I hope to see you there. Well, here's your weekly reminder that the Monday Morning Mailbag is also available as a podcast. Simply get up to your favorite streaming service and search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more. And the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast, as well as our other podcast, Second Cup, will come right up. Both of those podcasts are available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, and now right here on YouTube. Well, what do you know? Coffee's getting low that time of the show. Let's go back for a refill. Well, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. Hang on one minute. Oh, that is really, really terrific. Thanks so much for tuning in for the uh, power outage episode of the Monday Morning Mailbag. I'm trying to race through the material before the battery on my laptop gives out. So I think I forgot to say this morning, hey, if you're taking me along on your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. I really do appreciate that. If you're listening to the podcast, thanks so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate that. And again, 350,000 of us here in Northeast Ohio are out of power. And it's going to be several days before we get power back. So i um, going to put this together as, um, as quickly as I can uh, based on my based on my battery power and maybe kind of piece it together, maybe in a couple of other locations too that have 
someplace that has power. I'm not sure either office or my or my brother Tom's ha- ha- pl- place. Uh, I, I don't know yet, but um, <laughs> what, what are you going to do? At least uh, we got through it unscathed and that sort of thing. So uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I really, really do appreciate it. And I hope the weather is wonderful where you're at, and I hope you're enjoying uh, a beautiful, beautiful summer day. So let's get some of these refill comments before my battery runs out. You might see an edit here because my battery will give out. And um, yeah, looks like I got maybe 20 minutes left here. <laughs> so we'll get through the refill comments. You might see an edit as I pick up uh, the following day with a uh, fresh charge on the uh, on the laptop. Uh, here is, oh, this is from Brian. Well, let's kick it off. This is from Brian Zeance Bernstein, 8609. Mark, the real shave is a great piece of shaving history. It isn't worth the risk to your face. Enjoy the sentimental value and history it has for you. Put it on display as a conversation starter. I agree. That's what I'm going to do. If you missed any of the discussion on the real shave shaver, check out the previous two Monday morning mailbag episodes. Thanks very much for that, Brian. I really do appreciate that. Uh, this is from Jim from Northfield. Hey, Mark. When I purchase Witch Hazel, it's the house brand from the store. Some brands do have an odor to them. So what I do is add 10 to 15 drops of tea tree or coconut oil. Uh, adds benefits to the skin and alleviates the small odor. I have used Witch Hazel for years. I place it on my face directly after shave. Then after shave balm, then splash. Uh, I'll add moisturizer, too, in the final stage. This is what works best for me. My shave, my way. <laughs> Thanks for another great 3MB. Jim from Northfield. Yeah, uh, witch hazel, really versatile. A lot of wet shavers out there and viewers uh, have... Uh, have posted messages and comments regarding how they use it. Jim, thanks for sharing your witch hazel routine with us. Really do appreciate that. This comes from Ken Frederick. Ken Frederick, uh, 6223, I believe it's Ken Frederick. Um, Witch Hazel Special Edition. He says, Monday morning. (laughs) Let me start over. Ken Frederick, 6223. Monday morning mailbag, Witch Hazel Special Edition episode. I am personally a fan of the night before shave as I'm a pretty busy guy. Also, great barber pole info. Take care. Yeah, if you missed the previous episode, Mark Bagwell gave us a wonderful history of the barber pole. And, uh... Yeah, we were talking about uh, shaving in the morning, shaving in the evening. Uh, Ken likes to shave in the evening. And Ken, we had a a shaving tip here this morning uh, to help you with your post-shave routine right before you turn in if you uh, have a little bit of irritation. So thanks very much for that comment, uh, and uh, really do appreciate that. This comes from uh, Mark Vernick, and he writes, Always a great show to listen to about the hot beverages. Oh, this is great. We had this. We had this question on really, really hot days, which was what it was last time we shot the uh, Monday morning mailbag. Uh, does a, a warm beverage make you cooler than than drinking a cooler beverage? I had heard someplace that if you're hot, you may want you may want to drink a, a, a warm beverage, like a nice hot coffee, that will cool you down better than drinking, say, a cold lemonade. Anyhow, Mark writes. Let me let's start over. Mark writes. Always a great show to listen to about the hot beverages. There have been scientific studies supporting the idea that hot beverages can help cool you down. One notable study is by researchers from the University of Ottawa School of Human Kinetics, which found that drinking a hot beverage can indeed lower your body heat storage when the external environment allows for efficient sweat evaporation. The key factor is that the surrounding conditions must allow for the sweat to evaporate effectively. Wow. Mark, thanks very, very much for that. See, I knew there was some science behind it. Mark, thanks very much for updating us on the science of warm and cold beverages on a hot day. I really do appreciate that. Uh, This comes from Scott Martin. What a wonderful episode, Mark. I love the history of the barber pole. Again, Mark Bagwell, thank you very much for that. I got into wet shaving because I was interested in the deep history of it. I was strictly a commissory guy for a long time, but I never heard the story behind the iconic pole. Very cool info. Cheers, Scott. Yeah, uh, really, a lot of wet shavers, myself included, 
have really pursued the traditional wet shave because of all this great information. And again, check out Matt Pisarsik's blog, which is connected to his uh, Razor Emporium online store. He's also the gentleman behind Rex Supply and all those great razors there. Uh, Matt is really, really the guru on all things vintage Gillette razors. So check out all the information that he has up there. We will link to Razor Emporium, and from there, you can get over to his blog and all that great information. So uh, thanks very much for that, Scott. Really do appreciate it. Bart Buzz, which I think is uh, Bart Bartlett, uh, wrote, more good stuff on today's Monday morning mailbag. It's interesting that Witch Hazel is still getting a lot of comments. Yeah, and it continues to get even more comments this week. When I started using Witch Hazel, my wife gave me her half full, or is it half empty, bottle of T.N. Dickinson's. Later, I bought a bottle of cucumber scented Thayer's facial toner witch hazel. When my TN Dickinson's ran out, I decided that I actually enjoyed the natural scent of witch hazel and ordered some from Walmart. Uh, that's when I discovered the price difference between Thayer's and Dickinson's. Dickinson's was $3.98 for 16 ounces, and Thayer's was $7.97 for 8.5 ounces. That's about four times the cost per ounce. So sticking with Dickinson's was a no-brainer for me. Hey, your face, your rules, uh, you know, your budget, your wallet, if that's what you prefer, and it's giving you great results, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Um, fares will vary from... Uh, place to place. I think you can get a better price on fares online uh, on Amazon. I think you'll get more and you'll get it at a lower price. I think. Um, well, uh, you'll have to get up there. We'll link. We'll try to link uh, to fares on Amazon to see if that is true or not. I, I'm not sure. I seem to remember something like that. But uh, it's very, very convenient if you're going through a Walmart and you can grab Thayer's there. I think you might even be able to, to grab T, uh, Dickinson's as well. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> your face, your rules. Whatever which hazel you want to use and whatever fits your budget, hey, absolutely go for it. So thanks for that, Bart. Really do appreciate it. Uh, Keith Osman wrote, uh, regarding sandalwood soaps, my favorite sandalwood, in fact, my favorite soap scent, period, is Henri et Victoria du de Santa. Now, I think I pronounced that correct. That du is spelled D-U-C. I think it's, I don't think you pronounced the C there. But anyhow, Henri et Victoria, Henri et Victoria du de Santa. I have it in their premium triple milled tallow base, still a soft soap despite the triple milled, which is possibly the best soap base I've tried. But their regular vegan base is very good as well. Sandalwood encompasses such a wide range of scents. The ones I have smell so unalike. I would not even put them all in the same family. For me, the worst one was Art of Shaving. The cream performed well, but I disliked the scent so much that I gave it away. You know what? I will agree with you there, um, Keith, on the... Uh, the scent of sandalwood. I know Parasa red is sandalwood, but that's more of an organic, earthy kind of sandalwood. Whereas Taylor of Old Bond Street is more of a light, I guess you could say perfumey, uh, refined kind of scent. And Art of Shaving, uh, you know what? I'm going to have to sample it again because I think that was one of the first shaving soaps that I tried when I came back to the traditional wet shave. And that was... Uh, I believe sandalwood as well. So it was the Art of Shaving and Taylor of Old Bond Street that I first used when I came back to the traditional wet shave as far as a sandalwood scent. But um, the Taylor of Old Bond Street sandalwood scent really, really impressed me. It was very, very memorable. Whereas the Art of Shaving sandalwood scent was, was okay. It was good. But it wasn't as memorable as the uh, Taylor of Old Bond Street, uh, which is why I may get them mixed up as to as to which one I used first when I came back to the traditional wet shave. But again, your face, your rules, whatever you want to use and whatever sense you like. Hey, your preferences, your face, your rules. Absolutely. But I agree with you. Sandalwood does encompass a wide range of scents. Uh, no two sandalwood scents are similar. That's for sure. Uh, some can be earthy and organic. Some can be rather perfumey and refined. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and everything in between as well. I agree with you. Uh, Michael Taylor wrote, Good morning, Mark. Superb Monday morning mailbag, as always. Really enjoyed the watch. My favorite 
Taylor of Old Bond Street scent would have to be grapefruit. It's an amazing, beautiful scent, just so fruity and strong. The grapefruit hits you when you open the lid. They're all good, but this would have to be my number one. Have a great week. Take care. Well, hey, Michael, thanks very much for that recommendation. We'll, uh, we'll keep a lookout for uh, Taylor of Old Bond Street's grapefruit uh, shave cream. That sounds absolutely wonderful. And if you're a grapefruit fan, check out that particular shave cream from Taylor of Old Bond Street. And that wraps up this week's refill segment. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Well, hey, as you can see, we've got power back, and uh, I'm so happy to have power back. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot like camping out there for a while. Of course, uh, to kind of drive home the point, I've got my camp staff shirt on. <laughs> How about that? Snoopy and Woodstock right there. Yeah, and uh, hey, you, hey, might as well mention, don't forget Camp Phoenix uh, shave soap and aftershave splash. Uh, because I tell you, it was a lot like camping out, not having power. I mean, uh, trying to figure out how you're going to prepare your food, uh, maybe, you know, putting it on the grill, cold showers, <laughs> you know, uh, candlelight, flashlights to, uh, you know, brighten uh, the dark rooms. Oh, yeah. I'm just so happy the power's back. And we are going to uh, stick with the schedule of having a, a little shorter show because at any moment, you, you never know. Uh, they could cut the power again in order to restore power farther on down the line. Now, interestingly, uh, the development I'm in, uh, we have power here on this street and maybe a next street, maybe the street behind us, uh, and uh, the remaining two-thirds is still out of power, and I see some other neighborhoods up and down the main road uh, still don't have power. So that's why I say we're going to keep it to a, a shorter show, get through some of this material and give it to you, um, because the, you know, the power could be cut any time and then it might be out for an hour or so as they try to restore some, some other neighborhood. And then, of course, then they'll flip the switch and everyone will come back up. Uh, it's usually been my experience whenever we've had a power outage um, in this neck of the woods. But uh, again, uh, like 330 to 350,000 people were without power. So uh, it's taking a, a while to uh, get everyone restored. And uh, I was lucky in that power was restored here uh, a little earlier than most. So um, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. Oh, hey, by the way, thanks to Beth Jones for the Been There Ohio coffee mug. The reason why I use the Ohio mug is because <laughs> the power outage happening in Northeast Ohio. So I want to remind myself that uh, it's kind of an Ohio event. I think a lot of people will be talking about this power outage and storm uh, in the years to come. So thanks to Beth Jones for the uh, coffee mug. And again, we are using, oh, where's my coffee? I have it. Well, we're using the Trader Joe's uh, instant coffee. I've got the, uh, oh, it's right over there by my Keurig machine. Hang on, let me get it for you. Yeah, here it is. Trader Joe's, these uh, these coffee packs right here with, uh, with uh, creamer and sugar already built into it. Really, really delightful cup of instant coffee. All right, now that we've kind of done a little bit of housekeeping regarding the power outage and the res restoration of power, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Well, we've got a brand new razor blade this week, new from Rex Supply, their very own Rex Supply Platinum Razor Blades right here. Yeah, this is a, a sleeve of uh, 20 tucks of five blades each. Let's open this up and show it to you here. My thanks to Matt Pisarsik and everyone at Rex Supply and Razor Emporium for very, very kindly sending these along to the channel and allowing me to share them with all the viewers out there. There it is right there. Rex Supply Platinum Razor Blades. How about that? I love that artwork. I love that logo. I love the, the, the man with the fedora. That is just that is just so classy. I love that. I absolutely love that. And anyhow, here's what they write on their product page. You asked and we delivered. Everyone always requested that we recommend a blade that will work best with our Rex Supply line. 
And now we can. Introducing the Rec Supply Company Platinum Double Edge Razor Blade. Check this out now. Our razor blades are made from high quality Swedish stainless steel known for its exceptional durability and sharpness. This ensures that you get a precise and efficient shave every time. With a combination of chrome and platinum coating, they are the perfect pair for your Rex Safety Razor. Featuring an added nano Teflon layer, our platinum blades deliver an extremely close, comfortable shaving experience. Wow, that sounds marvelous. And we're going to get a review done on these ASAP. My thanks again to Matt Pisarsic over at Rex Supply for very, very kindly sending these along to the channel, allowing me to share them with all the viewers. These look wonderful. Let's open up the tuck here. Let's get a look at how they're wrapped. Again, I love the artwork. I love all the Rex Supply products. And uh, hey, let's just open up one right here. There it is right there. Revisit Excellence. Look at that. I love that. That's fantastic. How about that? That is absolutely fantastic. Love the great positive message and vibe. And look at that, folks. Oh, that's nice. These are double wrapped. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're just gonna fold that back over, and we'll probably use that uh, that for my first review. And we're gonna use, of course, the Envoy razor from Rex Supply. Boy, I love this razor. This is an absolutely spectacular, wonderfully precisely machined razor. Absolutely fantastic. It is a three piece razor, and again, as I say, stainless steel. And uh, I love this countersink right here in the base plate right here so that the, that the handle uh, right here, the neck of the handle here, uh, that uh, diameter is turned down just a little bit so that fits right in there, hand and glove like that. So you don't have to worry about an O-ring, anything like that. You just install your blade, uh, match up your base plate and your cap, and just... Just that just fits in there so very very nicely. Look how look how look how look how that is. That's just beautiful, absolutely beautiful, beautiful razor. So the first review will be with the uh, Rex Supply Envoy razor, and of course we'll also use the uh, Council adjustable slant razor from Rex Supply. This is another absolutely fantastic, fantastic razor. Yeah, uh, a beautiful, beautiful slant adjustable razor. If you like slant razors, you got to check out this beautiful slant adjustable from Rex Supply. So that's what we have this week, a brand new razor blade offering from the folks at Rex Supply Company. Once again, my thanks to uh, Matt Pisarsic and everyone at Rex Supply Company and uh, as well as Razor Emporium. Uh, for very, very kindly sending along these razor blades, the Rex Supply Platinum Razor Blades. We'll have a link below where you can check these out at the Rex Supply website. Matt, thanks again very, very much. Well, we have a review of Taylor of Old Bond Street's Almond Shaving Cream from viewer Mark Bagwell. And uh, we've been talking about uh, Taylor of Old Bond Street shaving cream on the program. Mark previously sent along a review of Eaton College shaving cream from Taylor of Old Bond Street. And we also uh, had a review uh, run this past Friday on Taylor of Old Bond Street's sandalwood shave cream. So if you missed that review, it ran this past Friday. Check it out. Anyhow, uh, this is a review of Taylor of Old Bond Street's almond shave cream from Mark Bagwell. And he writes, The Scent. No secret here, it's almond. It's a wonderful scent and I like it a lot. The strength out of the tub is probably a four or 4.5, but when lathered, the scent strength calms down to a one. The scent does last throughout the shave. Building a lather. I used my Captain's Choice ceramic shaving bowl with a desert sand glaze. The brush I used was a Simpsons Chubby 3 with a Sovereign Synthetic Knot. This combination whipped up enough deep, rich lather for a five-pass shave. This took all of 30 seconds. Let's talk about the performance. This is a Taylor of Old Bond Street cream, and like all Tobbs creams, the performance is excellent. The lather was slick and had plenty of cushion. Though, be careful with how much water you add to Tobbs creams. They are water sensitive. My final thoughts. The scent is pleasant and provides a protective lather. 
I then finished my shave with a Tobbs aftershave and cologne. You can't go wrong with Taylor of Old Bond Street. Hey, Mark, thanks very, very much for a terrific review of Taylor of Old Bond Street's almond shaving cream. Really do appreciate it. And I wanted to mention something else about their shaving creams. I recall reading some time ago that they were going to uh, phase out the inner lid. There's an outer lid here, but there's also this inner lid right here. Uh, that comes with a lot of their shaving cream tubs or came with all of their shaving cream tubs. So that inner lid right there, I guess, is an extra layer of protection to keep it fresh. I'm not sure. But uh, my sandalwood shaving cream came with that inner, inner lid. But the Eaton College shaving cream, as you can see here, did not come with it. It's not even kind of hiding in the, <laughs> in the, in the uh, out, outside lid here. You know, sometimes it'll get pressed into that outside lid. So uh, Eaton College did not come with that inner lid. Sandalwood did come with the inner lid. And um, I seem to recall that Taylor of Old Bond Street was going to phase out that inner lid. Uh, am I right or am I wrong? Please comment below and let us know if you got some inside baseball, uh, the scuttlebutt on uh, the inner lid, because I was really surprised. I didn't expect an inner lid on either of these. Sandalwood came with the inner lid and uh, Eaton College did not come with the inner lid. So uh, let us know uh, if you have any information regarding that. Uh, sure would appreciate it. I seem to recall somewhere, reading somewhere, that uh, Taylor of Old Bond Street was going to phase out that, uh, that iconic inner lid from their shaving tubs, uh, from their shave cream tubs. So uh, comment below, let us know. Once again, Mark, thanks for a terrific review on Taylor of Old Bond Street's Almond Shave Cream. Well, the folks at Occam's Razor have a brand new safety razor on the market. They call it the DE Boaz Adjustable Razor. Now, that name, Boaz, caught my attention because of this guy right here. That's right. That's Boaz. That's James Sefton's grandkid's pet dog. And, of course, we've been kind of tracking his growth progress. Uh, James, you need to send an updated photo so we can see how big he's gotten uh, since we were first introduced to him. So that's why I'm talking about this razor because of that name, Boaz, and here's what they have to write about it. What is the DE Boaz adjustable razor? This is the latest double edge razor from the team at Occam's Razor. This razor has been in development since mid 2023, and we are very excited in bringing it to market. These razors are designed for a lifetime of quality shaving. Uh, now, uh, it looks very, very similar to a uh, Mercure Futur. Let me show you my Mercure Futur right there. Okay, and you can kind of get a kind of compare that to the DE Boaz from the folks at uh, Occam's Razor. So perhaps it is a um, perhaps it's a Mercur Futur clone, just like uh, Vander Hagen offers a Merc Mercur Futur clone. We've reviewed this one right here. This is a this is a nice this is a nice a, a nice inspired by Mercur Futur kind of razor, and I think that's what the Occam's Razor is. As well, looks like it's inspired by uh, the Mercure Futur, at least on first look. I don't know if anyone out there has one of these or you have more information, please comment below and uh, let us know. But I wanted to make everyone aware that uh, this razor is available from uh, Occam's Razor. We'll have a link to Classic Shaving where it's available for sale. It's $39.98. So uh, again, if you, uh, if you have this razor and you've tried it, perhaps you have both the uh, Futur and also the Boaz, let us know how they compare. But it looks like it's a, looks like it's a, a, a good looking razor and uh, $40 is not a bad price point and uh, really kind of curious about it. So I want to make you aware of it because it's got the name Boaz. <laughs> We've been talking about the dog. Boaz. Uh, okay, so we'll have links below where you can check it out. Thanks again. And thanks again to James Sefton for allowing me to uh, share the photo of Boaz. And that wraps up this week's look at new wet shaving gear. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some of these questions and comments. This email came in from viewer Paul DeJardin, 
And Paul writes, hello, Mark. Go Buckeyes. Yeah, <laughs> Big Ten football right around the corner. Absolutely. Uh, I know I'm beating the dead horse here, but I did a bit of an experiment regarding tallow versus non-tallow soaps. In my opinion, there is no comparison. Tallow wins hands down. I've tried non-tallow traditional style soaps, glycerin-based, and old traditional tallow base. I tried using a shaving bowl and straight from the container brush loading. I found that the glycerin soaps produced the most boom lather, but slickness was not as good as the tallow soaps. Of these tallow-based soaps, Sterling and Goodfellas Smile were by far the slickest. This, in my opinion, is the most important part of a shave soap as slickness is what reduces any friction from the blade, which of course is what reduces irritation afterwards. As per irritation, I finally got some Thayer's Witch Hazel with aloe and was blown away by the effect. Sorry for the rambling, but long story short, for a smooth, irritation-free shave, I do believe that a tallow-based soap with a Witch Hazel post-shave application will provide the best irritation-free shave. Go Buckeyes. <laughs> thanks very much for rooting on the Buckeyes. Really do appreciate that, Paul. And thanks very much for um, uh, your little bit of research here on tallow-based soaps and also uh, Thayer's uh, Witch Hazel. We've been talking about that. Oh, he also added this uh, in a follow-up email. Uh, he said, uh, by the way, I was given my late dad's Gillette Tech circa 1960. Oh, my Lord, what a fantastic shave. It's true what they say about the old Gillettes. I guess they just don't make them like they used to. Have a good one. Again, go Buckeyes. Hey, it's wonderful that you have your late father's uh, Gillette Tech razor. That's absolutely fantastic. And yeah, those razors do, do deliver a wonderful, wonderful shave. And as far as tallow versus non-tallow, you know, I like them all. Whatever is best for you out there, as we like to say in the show, your face, your rules. If you feel you get a better shave from a tallow-based shave soap, that's great. If you prefer non-tallow, that's also very, very good. But Paul is giving us a little bit of uh, his opinion uh, based on his own personal research, and I really do appreciate that, Paul. And I will say that Sterling is an awesome, awesome soap. Really, really terrific. And they have some wonderful scents like Sharp Dressed Man, which is absolutely, oh, that's nice. That's really, really good. And Executive Man, all the man soaps that they have are just Oh, that's that's terrific too. That's that's both of those are great for an evening night out. Try Pienza, uh, Piacenza. That's it, Piacenza. This is really nice. Oh, that's very very good. And uh, they also have a nice. They also have some nice straightforward scents like lime. Boy, this is really man. This is it's beautiful. It's lime. That's really really nice. So check out all the wonderful. Uh, shave soap offerings from uh, Sterling. Say hi to Rod and Mandy when you do so. They uh, very, very kindly sponsored a giveaway this past April on the channel, and we really do appreciate their contributions to the uh, the channel and also to the show. So thanks again to uh, Paul for all the great research regarding tallow and non-tallow shave soaps, and a shout out to Thayer's Witch Hazel. Really do appreciate it, Paul. Thanks again. Well, all the way from Rome, Italy, viewer Marco Patelli sent along this post-shave technique called skin icing. We shared this on a previous Second Cup podcast, and I want to share it with you again here on the Monday Morning Mailbag in case you missed it. Uh, and Marco writes, hi, Mark, how are you? I wanted to propose a post-shave tip that I use mainly in the summer, but can easily be used all year round. Before using the alum block and the aftershave, I use a block of wet ice all around my face for at least three to five minutes. And now he adds here, I recommend that it is wet, otherwise it could cause burns or that it is wrapped around a light cotton handkerchief. So he uses this block of ice around his face three to five minutes. Uh, the technique is called skin icing and brings significant benefits to the skin. I prepare a block of ice in the shape of a bar of soap using a container of that shape 
which I place back in the freezer when finished. First of all, it closes the pores, making the skin even smoother and making the typical burning sensation caused by the use of alum less noticeable. It has an astringent effect on facial wrinkles and on any swelling present under the eyes. It also has benefits for concerns, the presence of acne or small pimples, reduces sebum secretion, and also has an anti-inflammatory effect, soothing any redness caused by improper shaving. Personally, I find it effective, and especially on particularly hot days, it gives a feeling of freshness that lasts a long time. Greetings from Rome, Marco Batelli. Marco, thanks very, very much for a terrific post-shave technique, skin icing. Folks, have any of you ever done this? Take a block of ice, wet, wet it down or wrap it in a light cloth, but wet it down and rub this around your face for about, well, he says three to five minutes, then follow with the alum, then follow with your splash, your witch hazel, that sort of thing. Wow, that sounds absolutely fantastic. I'm going to have to find a container <laughs> in the shape of a bar of soap myself, freeze some water, and give it a try. If you've tried this, please comment below and let us know. Marco, thanks very, very much for a terrific post-shave routine and technique called skin icing. Really do appreciate it. Viewer Al Spencer sent this along and he wrote, wow, George's three year anniversary coming up. Hard to believe. It really is hard to believe, Al. Thank you so much for framing up, George. I'm very flattered and honored by that. And my gosh, three years coming up since uh, you were given that George sketch in exchange for a shaving tip. Wow. Thank you so much for sending that along and a wonderful way to end this power outage episode of the Monday Morning Mailbag on a high note. Thanks again, Al. Really, really do appreciate it. And that wraps up another Monday Morning Mailbag. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Check out all the wonderful artists and soap makers and sellers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen right now. They make and offer some wonderful artisan shave soap. They also offer some wonderful wet shaving gear to enhance your traditional wet shave. The next time you're online, please take a moment, pay them a visit. I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerady, where you'll find all the Amazon listed products that I review in this channel. Organize and categorize so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Hey, we have another double take cartoon puzzle this week. Try to find the differences between the two cartoon panels. If you need more time, just pause the video or try to find all the differences before time runs out. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.